Welcome back guys to another one. Today let's have a look at Sabrent's Rocket Q series. You may know this one because it was one of the first M.2 SSDs on the market in an 8TB form. Alas, today I'm gonna cover the 2TB model which still has great value for money. It has been covered multiple times the comparison of MLC versus TLC versus QLC NAND cells and the overall conclusion points to the choice of maximum endurance ratings. However, advancements in NAND cell development, firmware and intelligent controllers like the ones from Fison make that single compromise much easier to bear, plus all of the Sabre drives are backed by a 5 years warranty anyway with online registration. Capacity wise there are 5 options to choose from. Prices are competitive and the fact that you can choose a 4TB and even an 8TB M.2 is an achievement in its own. It has become a brand trademark for Sabrent because all of their products come shipped in an all-metal enclosure with excellent branding. Also from what I've seen so far, all of their SSDs include a cloning software as well. It is the aforementioned aluminium case that offers the main protection for the M.2 drive inside. There is a quick user's guide and the drive is nicely protected with the help of a foam and a cardboard spacer. The Sabrent Q 2TB M.2 SSD is a single-sided drive that has on the main side a mini copper heatsink sticker. Spec-wise, under the hood we have a Fison E12S NAND controller, 4GB DDR4 DRAM package and 4 micro 96 layer QLC NAND flash modules, of course 500 gigs each. All of this help the drive to achieve up to 500TB return of official endurance and speeds up to 3200MB per second in reads and 2900MB per second in writes. Let's get the easy part of the way with the synthetic tests. In the first benchmark we see great results considering this is a QLC based drive. Crystal Disk Mark and Auto just reconfirms the advertised maximum possible speeds that the Sabre and Rocket Q is rated for. The following installation and loading tests find the drive in an excellent position in the charts yet again. Now for my favorite real life transfer tests. What you see now is me copying onto the drive a single 13GB video file to test the burst speed followed by a copy of the same file from the SSD onto itself. Then the same process is repeated but with a big folder of mixed files of 109GB which is the installation folder for the Red Dead Redemption 2 game. Coming back to the burst single file test, these are one of the best numbers I have seen for any Gen 3 M.2 drives out there. Now let's talk about the SLC catch because this is really interesting. Usually most QLC or TLC based M.2s at even 1 or 2 terabytes in size will exhaust their SLC cache and then write at their native NAND speeds. This SLC cache rarely approaches 80 gigabytes in size even on big capacity drives, hence my test of 109 gigabytes. But the same red Q2 terabyte drive keeps pushing all the way through so it must have an even bigger SLC reserve. As you can see there was no large dip in performance and the SSD maintained a respectable write speed. This is quite a pleasant surprise. Now the final test is the temperature one to check mainly for any thermal throttling issues. As always I will test it in my hotbox, the Dane 4 SFX build, first without any active cooling airflow and then with my Noctua 92mm slim side fan running at 60% RPM that will blow directly on top of the drive. So in the first scenario it's obviously that at this temperature the Sabrent Q 2TB drive is thermal throttling and thus it basically drops around 34% from its true write potential. The max recorded temperature reached was 70 degrees Celsius. Of course this is a worst case scenario which was employed on purpose because in my SFX build there is no active cooling whatsoever on the motherboard side plus there is always extra heat coming from the motherboard's chipset. So in any minimal ventilated case you shouldn't encounter any problems like this and don't forget that Sabrent even sells their excellent heatseek upgrade kit that will fit any single and double sided M.2. 
As for the second scenario with the fan on, you can see the extra airflow makes a huge impact, so we shave off exactly 33 degrees Celsius of the peak recorded temperature and thus no more thermal throttling occur. Again the ambient was around 70 degrees Celsius and of course the case's side panel was installed. So there you have it guys, this is one of the best surprises to date despite its age since it outperformed TLC based drives in my findings even in the real life copy test. Sabren did a home run here in creating such an excellent performing M.2 that has a great price target. This is possible thanks to the excellent Fizen controller and the highly generous SLC NAND cache that it's at least 120 to 150 gigabytes in size if I were to make an educated guess. It suffered in the torture temperature test which is expected for any drive of this caliber without a full size heatsink. But that's an easy fix with some airflow or with a heatsink upgrade. So if you want a great all-arounder for a good price and high capacity, this should be it. Thank you for watching guys and see you in the next one. Alex out.